My name is Pam Blankenship and I am a kindergarten teacher at Paintsville Elementary School and my project is the mobile blackboard and when, well I'm old, but when I started my career you, there used to be chalkboards and when you break out chalk for students nowadays they're like that's the stuff we're going outside to play because we're going to write on the sidewalk. I'm like no, there are actually little boards you could write with this and they're thinking like hey this is like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> But nowadays, I don't even have a chalkboard in my classroom. We have the whiteboards and we can use the dry erase marker, but that can find you. And I'm lucky enough in our classroom that we have a smart board and it's fantastic and it's, the kids get to go up and manipulate it. But when you do that, you're kind of confined to that area. And, and I don't know about you all, but if front row people take a look, the only row in this area that is full is the back row. So all those people back there hiding, that is me. I would be right back there with you. And it is like an innate ability, even five-year-olds know in kindergarten that they are gonna hide in the back of the room. Now, with the mobile blackboard, I was able to help correct that because we were able to buy an Apple TV and to connect it to the projector. So now I can go around with my phone or the Apple iPad Pro that we purchased and I can go anywhere in my classroom and get right up next to those students who are gonna hide in the back row Joes back there. No names mentioned, but, uh, but I can get right there with them where the action is. <laughs> Yeah, no other row is full. It's just those people in the back. So, but that's what we're trying to do is to figure out that there is no space in the room that you cannot go. Because, you know, it's really fun when you go to those meetings and, you know, as long as you don't make eye contact with the speaker, you are good. But not in my classroom anymore because I can be right up there next to you. Thanks to Mr. Oxshire. <laughs> but, um, so we purchased an iPad, the, the large one with the Apple iPad Pro, which is super nice, so the kids can use it. When it first came in, I started using it for our Lexia program because I had a couple of students who had like some mobility issues. They did not like the Chromebook. They had trouble with the smaller space to drag and drop, and there is a whole lot of drag drop in our program. And she was able to, I mean, when we would do Lexia, they, this student in particular would be in tears, but if I can give her that Apple iPad Pro, she can go at it and she is more comfortable because most of our kids who come in with any technology at all have had an iPad and they can manipulate it much better than you or I. Now, after um, we got our Apple TV in, we were able, like I said, to connect it to our projector. We also got the Apple Pen. So our kids who had some issues with fine motor skills, instead of putting them in a center with Play-Doh and then being like, okay, I can't write my letters just like everybody else, they get to practice it with the pen. And so no one is identified as struggling. And you could see the print is not great, but when we were studying adjectives, my students got to come up after, you know, at the, I think this was January, we were setting goals and describing our classmates and building everybody up, and they got to write adjectives to, des to describe their classmates, like he's wonderful or smart and kind. So it was a really fun activity, but they liked being able to do that and project their own work up onto our screen. Um, I was also able to use this with devices that we have purchased in the past through past grants are Osmo. So they were able to take the iPad that we purchased and use it with Osmo and the Tanagrams and the coding to help improve their logical reasoning and the masterpiece. They could use that pen for their fine motor skills and the monster to improve reading and writing. Um, our map data when we started, I've got my little cheat sheet here. When I started, at the beginning of the year, I had 62% of my students who were on target and I had a 38% that were at risk. Now at the end of the year, which is really, these are the, we haven't taken our final um, round of map testing. So this was kind of right at Christmas time. At Christmas time, 80% of my class was on target and 19% was above and I only had 1% at risk. So what we were using works. And our growth, in kindergarten we track like our letter recognition and our sounds. At the beginning of the year, um, I had for like capital letters, they could recognize 7.5. At the end of the year, we are up to 25.8, which is a 99%. And we are an all-inclusive classroom, so that's students of all learning 
abilities. Our lower case went to they could recognize 7.3 to now they are a 27.4 and they I do ESGI if your administration has not bought it for you you so need ESGI testing because it's all online you don't have to pre anything and then as administrators if they want to go in and look at your data it is all there and it's really easy to go into an RTI process with. But they do like the, the E in a book that you will see in the E in regular print. But for lowercase letters, we're at a 98% recognition rate. And for sounds, which is difficult, for a five-year-old, we started the year with they could recognize like 5.7 sounds. Um, and now we're up to 28 out of 31 for a 90%. So that's really good for, for a kindergarten classroom. So our growth has improved tremendously. And then you could see our work samples with our kids using the equipment. We also had our local McDonald's owner come in and present with them and he was able to use our equipment as well. So that's it. So anytime you lost, you made up with me. <laughs>